So you have what happened yesterday. New York Congress member Nita Lowy, um, uh, who proposed an amendment to a Homeland Security appropriation bill that was voted down by every Republican member um, of the committee. According to Congress member Lowy, the amendment would have given the attorney general the authority to block the sale of firearms to known or suspected terrorists if the attorney general has a reasonable belief that the firearm would be used in connection with terrorism. No fly, no buy. Um, explain exactly what this is. Um, we also have with us Vince Warren of the Center for Constitutional Rights, deeply concerned about the civil liberties aspects and the flawed nature of uh, this kind of um, gun control measure. Yes, I'm on the Appropriations Committee, and this was not the first time we tried to put an amendment up for reasonable gun safety, gun control measures. And, it, of course, it failed, because the re Republicans, for the most part, uh, all of them, voted against it. Look, if there are flaws with the uh, no-fly uh, list. Believe you me, as one who cares about our civil liberties, we must fix that. I know the ACLU and others have proposed uh, legislation to fix it, but guess what? The Republicans won't even let that legislation come forward. So come on, we've got to start somewhere. And believe you me, this is a first start, and we have to understand that we've got to fix any issues that would re that would relate to civil liberties, and that is in fact what we have been trying to do. Mm -hmm. But we must get. Uh, we must make sure that those who do not uh, should not have guns are not able to buy guns. And for the most part, those who are on a watch list should not be able to buy a gun and, and kill people. Vince Warren of the Center for Constitutional Rights, your response. Well, first of all, I really appreciate all of the action that's happening at the uh, at, at Congress and particularly uh, the sit-in. That's exactly what's needed, and I absolutely applaud that. What we have to be careful about, though, is pitting two different sets of constitutional rights against each other. And essentially, we have um, a Republican version of constitutional rights that have to do with um, gun control, which which uh, we at the Center for Constitutional Rights and other groups uh, think is not an absolute right, the way the Republicans do. Uh, and then you have, on the other hand, you have the rights that all of us have with respect to not being on these type of watch lists inappropriately or in error, which happens all of the time. And the big challenge, frankly, that we're seeing from the Democrats is that they're looking at those two sets of constitutional rights and they're deciding, well, gosh, these Republicans are really being difficult and this is hard. What's the compromise? And what they're essentially doing is that they're compromising a fake concept of constitutional rights and gun control. Um, and they're keeping that strong. And they're watering down um, on an already bad system, which we have, which is the no-fly list. People don't know how they get on the no-fly list. Once you're on the no-fly list, you don't know how to get off. So if you're using no-fly list as a proxy for dangerousness, as that way to tell that somebody's going to be dangerous, um, you're, it's not going to work. And we're essentially um, solidifying um, the Republican position against gun control by watering down our constitutional rights to stay free from uh, from these type of invasions. Congress member Lee, it's very interesting that it's the Republicans that are raising this issue that Vince Warren of CCR just raised. Sure. Very few Republicans have ever been concerned about civil liberties since I have been here. And let me tell you, Amy, I remember the days of COINTELPRO very well. Uh, I voted against the Patriot Act. I voted against all of the FISA uh, authorizations. And if there are problems, which there are, I think, with the watch list, we need to take up those proposals that have been put forward that the Republicans will not let us take up to fix it. Having said that, we've got to start some way, somewhere, and we've got to make sure that those watch lists are accurate, and we've got to make sure that those people who belong on there uh, belong on there, actually, and we have to make sure they don't get their hands on guns. Congressmember Lee, you know, when your colleague in the Senate, uh, Senator Christopher Murphy of Connecticut, uh, of course, representing Sandy Hook, also engaged in an historic filibuster, I think it was the ninth longest, 15 hours in the Senate, the agreement was simply to get a vote, and then all the amendment, all the, pro the proposals that were um, taken up were voted down, Republican and Democrat. Um, but in both cases, both in what you're calling for in the House and what um, he was calling for in the Senate, there hasn't been a straight-up demand for an assault weapons ban. Why not? 
We have to do that. There's the bill, the Safe Communities Act, that part of that bill uh, by uh, Congressman Thompson has a provision for banning assault weapons. Amy, let me tell you one thing. We have a strong assault weapon ban in California. We have to have a national policy because guns are transported across states all of the time and they end up in my community, even in California with the assault weapon ban. Also, we need to have have to uh, amend or repeal the t Hart Amendment, which I try to do every year, and that's a restriction on gun tracing. There are many, many aspects of this that are very complicated, but we have to start somewhere. These assault weapons, I mean, 900 rounds? What does anyone need an assault weapon to, pr to protect themselves or to, um, make, to ensure that they uh, are protected by their Second Amendment rights? You know, no one wants to take away anyone's right to hunt or to protect themselves, but assault weapons, weapons of war, weapons of mass destruction do not belong in the hands of anyone, quite frankly, in this country. So your plans now? Well, we're going to keep going. We're going to. This is the first <laughs> chapter uh, of our protest and our insistence that we bring these uh, bills up. We have a strategy. We're going to work on moving forward. And I think what's important now is this movement that's developing. We're going to continue to work with organizations and people around the country to make sure that we put the heat on those Republicans and on the Speaker to bring these bills up. It's going to uh, require us to do many, many things. It's going to be direct action. It's going to be organizing with our constituents. It's going to be legislative actions. And so it's going to be comprehensive. It's going to be very aggressive. And uh, you're going to see Democrats once again moving forward and I hope Amy I hope people remember these elections are coming up in November and quite frankly as a Democrat I'm gonna work very hard to make sure we take back the house and defeat these Republicans who really uh, do not care about anything except the NRA and the NRA's strategy to keep the people's voice and to keep us from bringing forward common sense gun measures. So we have elections and elections have consequences and I hope the public understands who's on their side. Congressmember Barbara Lee, want to thank you for being with us. Democrat of California, chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus Peace and Security Task Force, also former chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, uh, Congressmember Alan Grayson, who represents Orlando, Florida, will be joining us. Vince Warren will stay with us, executive director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. And we'll hear from a woman who lost her father in the Virginia Tech massacre. Stay with us.